See what sun and earth created, what Beltane bowed and Lythas blossoms have become, the thriving tree, the luscious meadow, ripened corn and golden wheat. And now she sings her song and beats the drum. The time has come. Our grandmother is here, Lamas, Lights Height, Luknasat. Hello everyone and welcome to the third of my Witches Sabbath paintings. The one where we celebrate summer's peak and the beginning of obtaining the harvest. Lamas is full of ripeness, color and warmth. The young and playful blossoms are gone. They gave way to heavy fruits and nourishing grains. But despite all the abundance, Lamas is also the beginning of an end. The herald of the imminent evanescence, a point of change in the wheel of the year. Until now, nature only showed us its riches and delights, but as the days shorten again, the earth prepares to rest. The concept for Lamas almost came naturally to me. Now that I formed a routine with painting these elaborate illustrations, I feel less pressured, which proves once again that consistent practice and challenging oneself is inevitable in pursuing goals. Quick description of the prep work for this one. As I did for the last two Sabbaths, I took a photo of me in the pose for the character, traced it digitally and sketched on top of it, to then transfer this sketch to my watercolor paper. I think you all know this process of mine by now, so let's rather talk about what went through my head while painting this one. When choosing the colors, I was really inspired by Disney's and Pixar's film Brave. I wanted Lamas to be warm colored, but also incorporate some other tones to show that darker times are ahead of us. Darker in the literal sense of less light. So I went for a dark teal as the main color of her dress as well as the frame. To still embrace the summer, I added lighter and warmer tones for her hair and the props, like red, burgundy, light green and ochre. By the way, I hate this stage of paintings after putting down the first layer of paint. Somehow everything looks flat and if it won't come together at all. I think that's something a lot of artists struggle with and that only pushing through helps with. For llamas, different grains like wheat, oats or reed are very relevant, but I went for the most significant one. I choose corn, because it is the most recognizable of them all. They are tall plants and the bright yellow cobs kind of execute nature's power to me. Growing up in a rural area surrounded by fields, I was taught about all the benefits corn has, but also on how dangerous the fields were once you got lost in them. So stay away from cornfields. Please, those are brutal mazes. But enough of the scary things, on with the painting. The thing next to the corn corpse is a so-called corn dolly, or grain mother, which is a puppet made out of leaves and airs of the harvest. To bring in some flowers and repeat the burgundy color of the apples, I also added some marigolds at her feet. Since her pose is rather simple, I gave her a basket full of red and golden apples, so it looks like she just returned from picking them. The wind in her hair symbolizes the approaching autumn, but her naked feet remind of the summer still lingering. And this is all I have to say about Lamas in this short video. Let me know down in the comments if you celebrate the Sabbath or if not, why they interest you. Also, make sure to head over to Instagram for the whole picture as well as some details. And leave a like when you're there already. The next Sabbath will be Mabon in September. And for next week, I have August's Join Me Journaling in line. So until then, subscribe and stay safe. Bye!